So what did you say yesterday about, you know, them making Cisco and they were, they were pointing objective and about how they were afraid about you guys getting too big and overpowering them? So they're not going to come out and say that, they, oh, they can overthrow them. You got to look at it. A mess is they're near everywhere. I mean, we're in countries where they, they don't even think we are, but we are. Um, I heard you're in Pakistan, too. We are there. Uh, Colombia, Spain. Spain, Colombia. Uh, there's a couple homies in Venezuela. Uh, I mean, all over the United States. We even have homeboys coming in from Alaska. I mean, w this this literally when you start getting into the grinding, grinding, start communicating with homeboys. When they tell you where they are, you're like, fuck, are we there over there already? So it, it's, it's, it's a really long hand. Yeah, we might not have the factory that the, the senoras have with all the sureños on the trees. Because if they're telling jump, they're going to jump. And not, and like I told you yesterday, I'm not here to disrespect no organization, nobody else. I'm here to point out the facts, homie, and to point out the things that got done in scandals. A lot, a lot of youngsters, a lot of homies have lost their lives in the penitentiary, risked their lives for a movement that is not what it was before. Yeah. And when, when Cisco from Fulton gets appointed, um, he was literally so close to fly and that's the funny part he was close to mosca from fernand san fernando valley that they were literally in the yard together they were back and forward and all of that uh the home uh another senor that passed away in centinella from cancer um his name is gonna come up to me Bobble. Uh, who Bobble? No, 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 not him. He was no. The homie was from Harpies. Uh, the senor was from Harpies. Um, um, uh, Chato, Chato was backing them up. Chato had been a senor that had always backed us up in a lot of situations. Alfie was another one that had backed us up in a lot of situations. There were a couple senores that had actually sat there and backed us up in a lot of situations. Uh, when guilty from Hollywood was to be made they pull up some incidents on him so they decide to put it in a back burner now there were three other people that were up from the mess that were really in a deep in the politic business wolfing for tiny winos was another person that was going to be named as trying to be another senor but there was a lot of pieces that didn't fell in place and plus the homeboy felt like that's not what he wanted to take his career he had been politicking because the reason why he was alive for he trying to make a lot of things better for the barrio, which he did, but he didn't do it for the reason that a lot of homeboys get into the politics. A lot of homeboys get into the politics to manipulate the homeboys to try to have a powering hand over them and literally control the neighborhood and the money. Let's keep it real and the money. <coughs> Excuse me. So when Cisco gets into it, he had been in the shoe. He got validated. He was doing his thing. When he got to the yard, his promise to the senoras was that he could reach out and give up Northern California, basically the homies in the Mission District, to get together and start kicking off the feria to him so he could help out all the carnales. And that's what he basically run his little slow campaign slogan, his little motivation thing was. Because you got to remember, San Francisco was actually one of the last people that really get into politics. Yeah, we have homies from different neighbors that were politicking, but... I said, together, I said, whole Bay Area, San Francisco mission, the whole mission district, we didn't have nobody that we really kicked up money to. We didn't have the taxes to one specific carnal. We didn't have this dope game pushing the streets for this specific carnal. That's not what it was going on. It's not like it was in San Jose. It's not like it was pushing the Salinas, all the different streets. It was not like that in, uh, over here. He figured since there's a mess, over there in North, North California, and I can push them. They're big homie. I can get the MS homeboys to flank out, basically, push the dope to the other two, three barriers that are there, and kick the feria to me, and then I can spread out the love. And he figured with that power over him being a senior from the, from the hood, that comes that we have to respect everything he said. Homies from L.A., Homies for here, in, there were homeboys now in Toledo, I guess. We have homeboys now in Toledo County. There's homeboys in all the areas, Bakerfield. The homeboys that were in the Northern California could basically kick to him. 
that was his angle and that was his get in. And plus he had done a couple of our waters for them too. So he was he had a little cool resume. And now the incident with Mosca happened that gave him a little kick. But the thing was him and another homeboy that was in Solano were pushing to try to get 20th Street green lighted behind that incident. He promised the senores that he will get to the bottom of the incident and he will turn up the heads of whoever touched Coco because none of the homeboys are. We separated. The separators now, now all the homeboys are in one prison. All Everybody that's from MS goes to one prison now. They don't want to let us go back to the mainland because they say that we're either going to kick it off or it's going to be a bloody riot. They might be right. So we all are one prison. So every homeboys are in one prison now. He's reaching out to those homeboys to try to figure out if he can get rid of for the homies from them, from basic from the street click. Our click is not in good standing. Two of my little homies from the States got pushed on behind that incident. One of them got pushed on just because he wouldn't release the information. He wouldn't tell them he was talking to us. Because they threw a filter up there and said nobody should have communication with trying to strict click at all. At all. We are not to be in communication with them at all in the States. They don't want us to be in a in the yard. If they, we are, they are pushing, basically they want them to deny the front run. They basically don't want to talk to the homeboys. We basically in the shit back burner behind that incident that happened. <laughs> But how do your brothers feel about it in the other institution that where they're all housed at? I spoke to them a few months ago because now they only get like three calls like every month, I think it is. They, they don't get that much access to free time, bro. They get three calls once a month and they only get to send out five letters and they get screams really bad. So, And it's affecting them because you got to understand we being closely monitored, watch. There's not homies that we can really do nothing. It's one prison. It's all nothing but a mess. So it's hard for us to try to set up what we had before in all the yards where we have positions. We have to plug. We have phones. There, it's a USP. It's hard to try to get anything to them. But I did spoke to a few of the homeboys. Um, and believe me, some homeboys are really saying they're fed up with this. They just want to do their time and just... If they never get sent to a mail and then they rather not deal with that. But some older homeboys that I spoke to from different neighborhoods and different states, they're not happy at all, bro. They felt like the homeboys from LA left them down, that the barrio left them down. The our letras, our structure, our reglas for our organization got broken behind benefits and money wise basically they felt that their homeboys betrayed them over they chose themselves instead of what we were supposed to choose it's supposed to be a mess over everything and that code is broken now yeah and, and even, though, even the older homies in El Salvador think of the same way even though they are housed in prisons now it's kind of hard to communicate but I heard they're being let out a little by little they're a little bit let out a little by little uh I got family that locked their homeboys are locked up and I, I get a little word here, but down. And then, but before this old Bukele incident happened, believe me, the homeboys were not happy about what was transpiring in the Fed. And that's what a lot, about, a lot of people's not talking about. We from the MS, we have our big homies in El Salvador. We have our homeboys that we used to run to. Yeah, the the, the Mecca, the Dilly Dilly, what was all started is LA. Yeah, that's true. That's fact. But Salvadorians did that. We started that whole movement. <laughs> So it's always going to go back to our motherland, El Salvador. But we lost sight of that when Little One and all these fools came into place. They try to cut that communication off. Oh, you guys are not going to explain to El Salvador nothing no more. For now on, it's going to be this and this. They tried that and fell at it. And they tried that again. We're guilty. They fell at it. Mula put a stop to like, hey, homie, we are homeboys. We're all from the same. We got to filter out. We still got to give our homeboys are dudes because they are still our homeboys. They're still the people that are fighting the guerras over there. They were not happy that all this was transpiring in the prisons. It got to the point where I remember around 2011 or 12, when the when one of the situation happened, one of the homeboys read, they got really fucked over in the yard behind politics um, issues in the yards. When that happened, 
when he got done dirty, there was a big meeting call out. Basically, everybody either from East Coast, everybody that was everybody Salvador, Guatemala, Honduras, Mexico, and Cali was there. That was a big issue going on because the homies in the Salvador were getting fed up. There are people who are dying behind political reasons in jail and here behind as one homeboy put in, I mean this with no disrespect, behind Mexican politics. Mm -hmm. And I, I I agree with it, bro. Because a lot of homeboys were getting killed behind politics that were not done right. A back call was done. And you gotta understand the back call was being made. All you get is a dispenser, homie. We fucked up. That's you, all you get. That's all you get. What about 15, 16, 17 holes you get put on you and whatever is going to come out of that if your blood got infected, whatever you got to go through the whole thing. What about that then? What yeah. about the, I mean. With a lot of these, um, a lot of these uh, Mexican mafia members hitting in the yard, I think they're making things a lot more difficult now because, you know, they're going to want all the power and they don't really want to share the power with your organization. They don't. They don't. They they put in Cisco now. They made Cisco. They're planning on making making another homeboy. Um, they made Cisco just, and I mean this would, I know Cisco. I did time with him on the shoot. Um, and I mean this with all the cariño I had for him, I had, because right now I'm looking at him as something else. I don't have no respect for the man whatsoever. Even with those big ass letters on his throat. You supposed to represent that all. That's supposed to be us, the familia. You're not doing that. You getting homies literally light up in the yards because of a secondhand information you're getting. And your his people that he had put in charge, it hurts me to say, but half of them fools are winnies. Straight up. Half of the senores came and got entourages. And they got a bunch of winnings for the never. Yeah, they did probably favor or nothing. But now it's not what you've done. Now it's how much money you can make me. And that's what's defining these positions nowadays. So I totally agree. I mean, I, I don't. I told you in our conversation, I can't follow something out of respect. And I lost a lot of respect for a lot of homeboys and a lot of, of the organizations because they're. When I was there, they trying to implement the no phone thing. They, they snatched up everybody that was from MS. They had a phone. They snatched it up because they didn't want us communicating with Mula. That was their excuse because Mula was working at that time with Fox, and they wanted to clip Fox entourage. Basically, they wanted to clip my boot entourage, and a lot of people that were backing those up, they wanted to cut that communication short. So what they did, they swept all our phones. Nobody from MS should have a phone in CRM BR. They did that. Toto did that. And the other food that did that over there was already from King Cobras and CR. They did that. No MS should have no access to a phone. If you do, you have to use the phone in another cell when another homie can see you and literally monitor what you're talking about. Wow, no trust, no respect for the people. What about if I just want to talk to my high now? I'm on a sick one. I just want to get freaky or just want to just do my thing. <laughs> you got to understand, we in prison. You know that goes down. Yeah, yeah. I'm not trying to have some dude that I don't know. Here's my whole conversation. We're like, what about my child? If I want to just make face and act like a goofy ass kid with my kid through FaceTime, I got to do it through while wow, this fool's watching me so he can go out. As soon as we walk out the door, like that fool's a pussy. He was doing this with his kid. He's a win. Because that's what they do. Yeah, I liked what you talked to me about yet yeah, last night when you said about the the hunger strikes, how the the the, the Emmettos didn't ask you guys for you guys' interpretation or opinion on it, and then the whole peace treaty and was about Raza, and they only came out just chasing drugs and and money. Look at it, and I'm not speaking no lies. And uh, Bubba from Florencia, when he passed away, there was a lot of problems with him because he spoke the right thing. He said. A lot of my carnales came out, took over the yards, and they didn't thought about the people that were left behind, the other carnales that were there. He said they came out, got greedy, and just started taking yards. They didn't say, hey, let's save this spot for the other carnales there in the back. They did that to their own carnales, and he spoke on that, not me. He spoke to He wrote those letters. He said that. There was a lot of issues going on behind that. They came out and said, 
actually had a conversation with two senores when they snatched my phone. I wouldn't give up my phone. They actually, my homeboys had to approach me like, bro, just, it's going to get worse. If you don't give it up, they saying, you telling them you don't have it. I'm like, I don't have it. They didn't sell me no phone, so how can I have a phone if they never sell me one? Even if I did have, I mean, it is what it is. But eventually, my homeboy, one of my older homeboys, they create the May MS in Honduras that was there with me in the yard. The actually founder of the Honduras chapter actually came up to me and told me, Perrito, just give it up, perro. Because if they touch your food, I know that's your homie from the bay is gonna jump. I know your cell is gonna jump. You're gonna put us in a fucking predicament. Just give up the phone, bro. We, it's, I'm not telling you because I don't believe you. You will get down. We know how it is, but he didn't want to be put in a predicament. So I told him you could come and get it. I'm not giving it to that weenie ass fool that have us a fucking yavero in the, in the, in the block. That fool's lame. To me, he's a lame. Just you can't get it, and that's the only way I'm letting my phone go. They snatched my phone behind that, bro. And then we couldn't sell nothing. Homies from MMS, even if we were doing our thing, we couldn't sell shit. We had to let them sell their thing first. If they're right now, then we can sell our stuff. But if it was prioritized that their dope had to be sold first. Yeah, the Ameros dope. That goes yeah. for everybody though, too. Even the Sureños are not allowed to sell their dope until the Ameros make their money. Yeah, so the, when the, that was when they first came out, they started doing that greedy stuff. So I looked at it. I'm like, oh no! But didn't you guys told us to do this hunger strike to better for the people, to better for the raza, to to be us for it be equal? Yeah, I understand. You guys are the Ameros. You guys are the Senores. You guys did what you guys did in the '80s and the '90s. What about us? The held these houses for you guys for a long time. What about all these wars that we have gone through with the Blacks, with the Gals, with the Paisa, with the Norteños? What about this hunger strike where homies were actually, like I told you, there was homies cheating on those hunger strikes, hiding the bologna sandwiches, hiding their peanut butter packs. That's not hunger strike, homie. Hunger strike is the shit that we did where we will pass out. They literally will have to come in there and tell you we will we were forced to two-fetch you because you can't be like this. You're going to die. Literally take you out of your cell. You can't fight after five days, homie. This that much you can do with a hooter if they do a cell extraction. You haven't eat for five days, you haven't drink water for five days, your body's gonna automatically start to shutting down. So when they come in there and do cell strike, we can only fight for so long. Then they put a tube down your throat, what you're gonna fight for if you're handcuffed down to the knees. The hunger try were done for the benefit of the hand. Where's the benefit now on the yards? They ain't, the, girl, they, all it can all it was was one big power move for extortion. And now this peace treaty, bro. Like I said, we used to be on the opposite side of the fence, but I speak the truth and I like how you speak the truth. So I give my respects to a man. And I used to and this one thing I always told the homies the every time I land in the yard, you guys have a misconception on Norteños. You guys have a misreading of these dudes. You guys look at them and be like, oh, the fools are pussies, the fools are winnies. That's what you're wrong, I have fool. Don't do never underestimate your enemy. Cause these fools will kill you in a fucking heartbeat. They're just like us. Sometimes they were stronger. Cause there might be eight of them dudes, and there might be 40 of us, they still will get off. And that's one thing you gotta respect your enemy. There's a lot of quotes, the bigger empires has said that Caesar, uh, Julio Caesar said that Muhammad Ali said that you got to respect your opening. You can't minimize your opening because you don't never know if the person you got in front of you, they will fight, is going to kill you that day. But they had a misconception of them. And I used to tell them, you guys are wrong, homie. Them fools are killers. What happened now with the peace treaty? We were in the back. There was a lot of homies from the Bay Area back there. That we were serving life. I was serving a life sentence. I got my overturn under the murder penalty. No, I came home. Other than that, I would still be stuck in the trenches. But look at it now. What happened to all these homies serving life? What happened to all these homies sketching all that time behind those riots, behind all this pegada? What happened to the, the you guys just say we're gonna peace treat it with Norteños? You guys can sell up, you guys get tattooed with them. If they jump, we jump. They start doing that. And, so our opinion doesn't count. Our opinion doesn't matter. They didn't ask for nobody's opinion, huh? It, it, it felt like, hold on, we frontlining this whole war that you guys started, that we followed through. You guys drilled this shit down in our head. 
the North Angels were the enemy. But if you look at it, and I should have known better when I started doing my studies and I started actually trying to get knowledge, I should have opened my eyes then. But I mean, I was young, dumb, and stupid. But if you look at it, a Norteño faction became because their own homies from LA felt what they were doing was wrong. When the whole NF thing came about, when the whole organization came about, a lot of homies from down south they started that movement because they felt what their own homies were doing was wrong. Did you know that a lot of Norteños in this generation, I know my generation knew about it. There's a lot of Norteños out there that don't know that La Familia turned Nuestra Familia was actually founded by ex-Mexican Mafia members from down south. They were the original. A lot of them dudes were from Maravillas, from Artesias, from Chivas. A lot of them dudes from Florence. A lot of their founders were from barrios in L.A. that were, they saw the scandalous shit their own homies were doing. And I, I and, and it's true you said that because I had a conversation with a Norteño when I was in the county. Um, he got tricked out the game. He started being disrespectful. And I asked him a question. I said, hey, youngster, let me ask you something. I said, I'm not too older than you, but let me ask you something. Do you know where your roots are coming from? He said, what do you mean? Well, I said, I'm it's just a simple question. I'm not going to get into the respect. I'm just asking, do you know where your roots actually come from? You know where your familiar is coming from. He said, we from nuestra familia, que la, la, la. I said, yeah, I understand. But do you know who founded that whole organization, homie? He said, Norteños did. You are avoiding the question. They don't know the history because they don't take the time to actually look it up, bro. And that peace treaty wasn't really happening here in the Bay Area. A lot of dudes are still killing each other. A lot of sureños are still doing pegadas in Norteño. A lot of Norteños are dizzing and doing pegadas in songs that they're doing pegadas in the so they really didn't accomplish much, at least on this side a little bit. But now, if you're looking at what they're doing, they start making señores from San Jose. They start making señores from Salinas Valley, from Salinas. They start making señores from down these areas. So what they're trying to do is get this whole upper northern California on the lock so they can backflip it back to the 80s and have the whole situation they had back then. Yeah, they made a... They made one from uh, La Posada. They just made one from Vagos. They made two paisas that are from North as well. I got their names. I just got to do the stories about them. They're making a lot of carnales up North, and that's just a slow infiltration that nobody's noticing. Nobody want to open their eyes. Nobody want to speak on it. Either afraid they're doing something. A lot of people from my name and my story, they might know who I am. I'm not afraid. Like I told you, I'm not afraid of that. I did my time. I lived peacefully for the past three years since I came home. But this is the thing. I'm not disrespecting nobody. I'm pointing out the facts, homie. You guys told us when you guys came out that we were going to do better. White homies are getting killed over $50 dead, over a hearsay, over a cheese man, over gossip people, over homie refusing to do something for you guys. Why you guys are murdering these kids? Because some of them fools are 19 years old. Some of these dudes are already older. They know what they're doing. They've been politicking. But all these kids, they're throwing their life away. Nobody's actually telling them, homie, that what they're going through is just a bull of crap. Hey, uh, I was talking to one of your members, and uh, he actually told me about a certain situation that the MS-13 and the 18th Street came together with the El Salvadorian government, the new president now. But while he was running for president... You know, he offered a million dollars so you guys can stop beefing on the streets. Peace treaty. Uh, the peace treaty so he can win the election by persuading the, should I say, the country that he was going to stop the level of violence that was going on in the streets. So you guys were paid off a million dollars, but he also said that million dollars only ended up in the hands of Mexican mafia members. You guys didn't benefit from it. The 18th Street benefited from it, only to end up in the penal system and all you guys are slammed down anyways. See, this is a trip that you actually brought up the, the subject. 